Today we're going to talk about ABL trees. And before we start doing that, I'm actually going to uh, refresh your mind on binary search trees. Because now we're going back to not just talking about binary trees, but about binary search trees. So those are the ones where like anything here is going to be less than or equal to the root. So I suppose in that case, if you say that the root is x, and we have a y and a z here, then y is less than or equal to the x, and then z is greater than x. That's essentially what that's saying. Left side is less or equal, and this is greater. So, as I kind of brought up the other day, <clears throat> When you're inserting things into a binary search tree, so for example, if we're inserting the words hello, you create a, a root node, and then the E is less than the H, right? So it goes here. The L is greater than the H, so it goes here. The other L would technically go to the left of this one, and then the O would go here. So this tree here, if, the, if after I finish inserting everything, I go ahead and do the in order traversal. I'm going to end up with E H L L O, which is the sorted version of that, right? So, what is the time complexity of this process? Well, we have n items, so for each of those items, we need to insert them into the tree, right? So we need to do insert n times. How, and, then, and then after we do that, we just need to traverse them once. So that's just a plus n. So we have insert. That's not how you spell that. n times. And once we do that for n numbers, so insert n times, we go ahead and we just do the traversal, which just takes n time. However, how long does it take to insert something? To insert something, we have to traverse the tree and figure out where it goes. How long is that going to be in the worst case scenario? Or not n. Log n. n log n. Those are all right, but how do we represent that in the tree is more of the worst case of that is going to be the height of the tree. The height of the tree. So the O is going to be N times the height, plus an N, I suppose. This height could be N, as somebody said. could be log N, as somebody else said. It could be anywhere in between those numbers, actually. In this case, the height of the tree is going to be the path from the root to the farthest away node. So in this case, either the L here, this L, or this O. In the best case, if we're inserting something, it's going to be inserted like here or here. In those cases, this is a shorter path. So that's kind of like our, uh, our, our ideal scenario. If we're just searching, the ideal scenario is just the root. We find the root, we're good to go. But if we're inserting something, the best case is going to be the leaf node that's up closer to the root. And so, why could this be n, and why could it be log n? Well, if the tree is a degenerate tree, it's basically a linked list. And when you're inserting in the linked list, if you're inserting the biggest number each time, it's going to go all the way here, so it's going to take n time. So in that case, it's n times n, assuming it's a degenerate tree. In the case that it's a balanced tree, as we were when we were talking about the properties of a binary tree, that's actually going to be log n. Yes? Could the fact that it's like, what are the different types? Whole, complete, and whatever the other one was, could they perfect. all change that, the, the number? Or is that, is it The perfect tree will always be log n. The complete tree will also be always log n. The full tree may not be log n. <clears throat> Because the full tree is the one that has zero or two children. And so, actually, well, yeah, that, might not, that may not be log n either. Because you could do something like this. It's almost like a degenerate tree, but it's not. That 
That's a full tree, but it's pretty degenerate. What's that? You need one more at the rear. Yeah, you need one. Oh, yeah, thanks. Still pretty degenerate. You know, it's like half, half, half degenerate tree almost. So, uh, yeah, but a complete tree and a perfect tree, yes, they're, they're okay. So, ideally, how do we consider something to be balanced? Well, if we're looking at the height from the leaf nodes and up, we take the biggest number, which in this case is zero. So this is a one here, and this is a one here. And then we take the biggest number of that, which is also just a one, becomes a two. To get this, we gotta figure this out. So we take zero, zero. We take the biggest one of those, and we add one, so one. Then we add one to the biggest one here, which is two, becomes a three. This is zero, zero. This becomes a one, and so on. The way we find out that this tree is balanced or not is if we do this for the entire tree all the way to the root, and the difference between the left and the right child, the absolute value of that difference is less than or equal to one, we're okay. If that difference is two or anything bigger than two, but including two, then it's unbalanced. And that's when we have to perform a rotation to try to balance it, which is what the ABL tree algorithm that we're going to talk about today is going to perform for you. Right here is the example when the tree is unbalanced. This is okay because it's a difference of one, difference of zero, difference of zero, difference of zeros, zeros. This is wrong. We don't even continue looking up in the tree because this is wrong. And already from there, things will... It's possible that... Up here, this could be balanced. For example, this is a four here. But if here we had something like this, one, one, two, we have a node here, one, and then three, that's balanced. That's okay. But this is wrong. So we don't even keep going. We stop, we stop and fix that first, okay? So that's how we know that the tree is not balanced. So the idea is we want to insert things and we want to maintain the balance. Now, inserting just out of like the blue, so if I give you some input and you just insert it, like for example, one, two, three, four, would make a degenerate tree, right? Some input though, such as three, one, two, and four, is not gonna make a degenerate tree. It makes a relatively okay tree. In fact, that's almost a, uh, I mean, that tree is almost complete. If, if this two was over here or something, that'd be okay, that'd be like a complete tree. But um, yeah, so, we want to be able to maintain a tree balance without having to, to worry about what kind of input we're gonna get. And we will achieve that using rotations. One last thing before I show you what the rotations are and how to do that is when you're thinking about inserting into a binary tree, one thing we don't usually think about is removing from binary trees. The way you remove something from a binary tree, so delete it, if you have a scenario like this and you're deleting this one, if that one has no left children, all you have to do is take the right child and replace it. So now it's almost like you just erase that out of existence and that becomes a new child. That's the easy one. In the case where this does have a child, if it just has one child, well, that's simple. You just go ahead and replace it with that. Someday I'll get it up there. There we go, close enough. The problem comes in, in this scenario. What if I have something like that and I have to replace this one? Well, I can bring this up like that and I'm good, sure. But what if this has a child too? Now I can't bring it up anymore like that, right? So what you do is if you need to replace this, you need to find, and there's a left child, you need to find the rightmost node and replace it with that. So in this case, you'd actually replace it with this. So if this goes away, you actually take that and replace it with that. So that is, that is how you would replace nodes. We'll talk more about that after the break because in the assignment, you don't have to delete nodes from the AVL tree, you just have to insert them. But I just wanted to bring that up because it's useful to know.
So anyways, now we can move on to the fun part. I don't think I copied the edge. Come on. Nothing got cut off, right? No, okay. So before I just show you the algorithm, I kind of want you to develop it with me and figure it out on your own. Because it's a, it's a good way of actually understanding it. Then me just giving you like, yeah, this is what you do and that's it. So, in the last two classes we tried, uh, one of them was Corona and the other one was Ebola virus. So, <laughs> let's not use a virus for this one. Although Ebola virus was a beautiful example. It actually worked for all rotations. Um, what would you like me to insert into this one? Polio. polio? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're doing polio, I guess. But maybe polio virus, so it's long enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We start with the P. Is it hot in here? Or is it just me, like, getting okay. sicker? Okay. So, uh, Okay, so we start with the P, and then um, there's nothing to else to do because it's just a root. We can go ahead and verify the height. It's just zeros. So we're good. Where is the P, the O going to go? It's binary search, so it should go here. And make sure you, you check me because I, I might mess up the alphabet. I had a really hard time last class understanding that R came before U. <laughs> I don't know why. It just bothered me. It doesn't feel right. If you don't believe me, watch the video. We'll see. But um, yeah, so okay, that's okay with that one. And then um, we can verify the height every time we insert. But we only need to verify that the side that we insert on. Because notice that the zero never changed. It'll be more obvious once we have more numbers in there and you, you start seeing that it doesn't get updated. So uh, okay. Next one's the L. Uh, L's gonna go to the left of P and to the left of O. So right there. So we got zero, zero, then we update the height there to one, and we update the height there to two. There we have our problem, the first problem, right? The, the two, zero, because that is a height difference of more than one, and therefore can be considered an unbalanced tree now. Okay. You, I haven't shown you the rotations, but what do you think we could do to fix this height difference? Make O the root, kind of like a string, where you're pulling it up from here, and then the O, the P sort of rotates down. So uh, you can do something like, say the P's there, and then it goes like, whoop, comes down here. Okay? Like that. And then the L can stay in the same spot. And that's great, because that will go ahead and fix our problem. This is what is known as a right rotation. So now I'm gonna introduce you to the first two rotations that you should know. First of all, you should know that even though there's four of them, they're all essentially the same rotation just fiddled with. Between left and right, it's just the mirror of them. And then the other two, as you will see, is just a combination of these as well. So you shouldn't have to hardcore memorize these things if you understand them. So, Looking at this, it's quite intuitive to see that this is the case. And it's also maybe a little bit less intuitive, but still intuitive, that if L had children, we call those children like children's one, two, and maybe O had a children here called three, and P had a child called four. Now, when I say four there, it could be one child, but it could also be like an army there. So like it could literally be like a tree there, an entire subtree, you know. Typically, you don't see that when you're inserting, only when you're deleting, but it could be something like that. All we're saying is you just grab that as a whole and plug it in there. Those children, when you do the rotations, 
three of the four children would remain in the same spot. One of the children will get moved around. So like it'll get adopted by somebody else. So we get one and two stay in the same spot, and so does four. But child three is going to change parents. It's going to go from being the right child of O to the left child of P. And that's okay, because we're saying that child three is greater than, or it's just, yeah, it's just greater than O, and it's also less than P, right? Because if it was greater than P, it would go to the right side of P. And if it was less than O, or equal to O, it would go on the left side of O. But it's not. It's just greater than O, but less than P. And therefore, that's why it goes there. Notice that over here, it's the same situation. It is greater than O, and it is less than P. So in both cases, it's the right spot for the, for the child to be. So we're not breaking the binary search tree property. We're just moving it around to the new uh, parent. But ultimately, the basic rotation of that becoming that is done there. And it's just a matter of keeping the children on track of that, which this is all pointer. So as long as you don't touch child one, two, and four, they will still be in the right spots. The only one that you actually have to go in there and actually modify the pointer is of the child number three, which right now there is nothing because we just have an LOP in it. But that's essentially what these rotations are. So this is sort of the, uh, the algorithm for them. And X, Y, and Z represent the nodes that you're rotating. And then one, two, three, and four represent the subtrees, which are those child, child. It could be just one child. It could be no child at all, or it could be an entire subtree. And even though it says one, two, three, and four, don't think of them as, as actual uh, numbers. Like, even though here, yes, they're in the right spot if they were like sorted per se, like in the search tree, I want you to just think of them as identifiers. I didn't want to use more letters because I didn't want to get you confused between the things that you're rotating and what the children are. This is called a left rotation when, when you can see that the right side of the tree is heavy, right? Because here, if we're, if we're computing the heights of this, you can see that here the height is zero, zero, or whatever it is based on the children. Uh, but if they have no children, then it would be zero, one, and then two, zero, right? So that means that the right side of the tree is heavy. And because the right side is heavy, so think of this like a little scale. This is heavy, right? Two zero. Because it's heavy, because this right side is heavy, what do you need to do? Well, you need to take some of this weight and put it over here. So that it's balanced, right? So right heavy, rotated left with a left rotation. So it's a little bit backwards sometimes when you think of, well, if it's heavy on the right, I perform a left rotation. Well, it's because you, you are putting stuff on the side that's not heavy to make it balance, okay? So similarly, if the left side is heavy, so something like this, where the left is heavy and there's nothing here, then what you need to do is you need to rotate stuff to the right so that it is balanced, okay? There's two more rotations, but again, once we get there, we'll kind of derive them before I show them to you. So uh, going back to, to our example, we had P, we had O, and we had L. And we rotated them to L, O, P, like that, okay? And now it's balanced. So we can continue inserting things. So let's go ahead and insert. And I'm only raising it because I want to be able to see the word polio here so I can see what to insert. Let's go ahead and insert I. Thank you. 
Okay? That is correct, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and measure the height of this. So we only need to measure the left side of the tree because that's what we modified. So we only need to update this heights. So we take the one here and the zero and we take the biggest number there, which is one, and we update that to two and we don't need to modify anything on that side. So uh, also the height differences are less than two. So we're okay. Okay, let's go ahead and insert the O. All right, where is that O gonna go? The O is gonna go on the left side of the O that we already have, but on the right side of the L, so right here. We update this one here, and because we are the, the one was already what we had, then the rest of the tree will not change, right? Because one was already the biggest number. All right, we are going to insert the V. Where's the V gonna go? The right side of P. So then in that case, we update the P and therefore we update the O. We do not need to update any of this stuff here because it didn't get modified. Only the other side got modified. So that's why nothing gets updated there. Well, we do need to check those to make sure this is balanced and it is balanced. Therefore, we're okay. Let's insert the other eye. The other eye is gonna go right here. So we recompute the heights here. I recommend when you're implementing this, you could, it's kind of like Fibonacci. With Fibonacci, when you learn Fibonacci in 202 with recursion, every time that you computed a Fibonacci number, you computed every, every number before that, right? It's very inefficient. What you want to do is like dynamic programming style, where you actually remember the number somewhere so you don't have to recompute them every single time again. So in this case, actually create two variables called left and right weight heights or weights and actually store all these values and just update them. That way, you don't have to recompute them every single time you look at them because that's very, very inefficient. And when you're doing that for 10,000 ships, you know, that's, uh, that, that makes Sally crash. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, we can go ahead and update one there. We only update this side. We already have this saved, so we don't have to recompute it. And then we update this to a 3. We also have that already saved, so we're okay. Nothing else needs to be updated. All right. Time to insert the R. Where's the R going to go? Left side of B. This is the one that, like, this bothers me. Okay. So, zero, 0, This one gets updated. This one gets updated. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. The 1 over here gets updated plus 1, which is 2. So then we run into a unbalance, right? We stop computing the heights there. Technically, this would be updated to a 3, and that's balanced. But that doesn't matter because the problem, or we already have a problem here, right? This is a problem right there. So I meant like, shouldn't R be on the left side of P? O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. No, no, I think it's okay. Don't mess me up, man, because I will believe you on that. No, I think we're good, right? Majority concur, right? Okay. So uh, either way, even if like even if we mess that up, that doesn't matter for the example, you know. As long as I, I like that we did this because we need to do the rotation now. So here's the thing: which rotation do we do? It doesn't look like this, and it doesn't look like this. But really, the computer doesn't care what it looks like. It cares what we coded it to do. And like I said, if it's right heavy, we do a left rotation. So let's go ahead and attempt to do a left rotation and see what happens. I like that that is there still because that means that there is another tree up there. That we're just not messing with that at this point. We're only messing with the stuff in the circle. So here's the thing. We are trying to do a, 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 a right rotation, or sorry, a left rotation. Left rotation. And I'll just rewrite it here. This is going to become 
that and the children would go like that, which is the same thing that I have done there, okay? So the problem here is, what is our Z? Can anybody tell me what our Z is? No, it's not R, because R is actually two, technically, right? This is this. This is this. R is technically the little two there. But what is this? Because we need to have a Z. It's an empty node. It's an empty node. So how can we do that? Well, we can just put a temporary empty node like that. That's it. Just... And that's mostly for our benefit so that we can see how the algorithm works. You don't really need to insert one into the uh, program when you're coding in. But now it's more clear like, oh, okay, things are moving around. In fact, we can also kind of insert the, the little nodes that we're not using. So that, you know, that's this child and then this and this, which would be those two. Here's one, three, four. And this is two also, let's put that like that, okay? Okay, so now, this is much easier to uh, now to visualize. Oh, you can do that? Oh, wow, I know there's more colors there. My boundaries have opened. I can use more colors. Are they different colors? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're not that different. Different shades. Yeah, different shades. Still, cool. Now we don't have to reuse colors, because I've been reusing colors sometimes, because I run out of colors to, to get. On that third page, you can do custom colors. Yeah. So we can be Bob Ross. Yeah. All right. I'll do that over the winter break. I'll set up some custom colors. I'll watch some Bob Ross videos and like get some nice colors. Gotta wait till after winter break. Wait, spring break. Spring break, not winter break. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. So, um, sorry, I have like Bob Ross memes going in my head right now. <laughs> like, you need two benches because everybody needs a friend, right? That's why I, I, nobody even commented that on Discord because somebody said like, why do, you, why do we need two pointers? And I was like, because even, you know, even pointers need a friend. And nobody was like caring about that. I was like, so sad. Care, care about pointers, guys. Pointers are pointers too. Okay, so anyways, now that we have this, it's, it's see, easy to visualize how things will get rotated. Meaning that the V, I'll do it here so I can keep everything on page. The V becomes the root the P is going to stay there, and then the, the, the imaginary node is gonna move over here, right? Because we're going from this to this. So, cool, now what about the children? Don't forget about the children. So, here we have the ch child of X would go here, and then the childs of A, three, and four would go there, which are all actually imaginary, but two is not imaginary, that's an R. And so I want you to notice that, as I said, I think I said before, three of the four children will remain in the same spot, Well, one of them will have to be uh, changed from whose parent is, or like reassigned per se. And so here, that gets reassigned to there. Okay? So now once we do that, once we do the rotation, we can get rid of all our temporary stuff. Wouldn't we have to rotate again anyways once we get U? Once we get U? No, I, I think I'm just not rotating. No, right. no, no, no. The fact that you said ro rotate again is correct, but not for the reason you said, actually. Um, but I, And also, you don't ever look ahead in ABL trees. So even though... You, you, the next thing may fix problems. You don't look ahead. It's not how the algorithm works because that takes more computation time than you so wanted to. There would be like something that would make it rotate in anyways, right? Yeah, so you don't want everyone to, to do that. So now we ended up with this. I keep wanting to put an R there with a P. We were computer heights. And we also have a problem. See? We didn't do much, actually. All we did is we flipped that. We flipped, we flipped from like a right heavy tree to a left heavy tree there, or subtree. 
but it's still on balance. So you're like, what do you do when your code doesn't compile? You try to compile it again and see if maybe it compiles. So that's kind of what we're going to do. We're like, well, I guess let's try to rotate again. So um, hopefully you actually try to change the code. But sometimes it can happen where the second time you compile it works because of the way you have libraries linked and things like that. So it's, don't, don't scare if that happens. It's not black magic. It's a reason for that. But um, anyways, so in this case, we have a left heavy tree. So now we're going to perform a right rotation on this and see and hope for the best. So again, we will have our imaginary node A. And then this time, I'm not going to do this whole color coding thing. But ultimately, what we're trying to do is change that. And it will become that. And yet again, if A had children, they'd stay in the same spot. And so would B if B had a child. The one person that gets moved around is going to be this one. It's going to get moved from being the right child of P into the left child of V. And then if we remove those temporary stuff, we end up with this, which happens to be, as I can already hear people saying, we ended up with what we started with. Now you're sweating in the midterm at this point. Here we go. <laughs> it's like, what do I do now? Okay. So this is an example of where a single rotation will not fix your problem. You need to do what's called a double rotation, which are the other two types of rotations. But again, before I show them to you, just visualizing the problem here, we have this problem. We have this P, V, and R that we need to balance. What could I do to fix that? Like what? How could I convert, convert them? Like, tell me. Make v, make v the root. Make V the root. What? Yeah. So make R the root. That seems better. And it's good then, right? Now we fix the problem without doing some nasty rotations, right? So essentially, that's what we're trying to achieve. And you, you could probably visualize it and be like, yeah, that's what we want to do. You could even probably code it to do that exact thing. You know, where, where do the children go in this case? This child will go there. Um, if R has any children, this child would go here. And then if R has any children on that side, he'd go here. And if V has any children on this side, he'd go there. And yeah, you could call that and not even have to worry about anything, right? So I had R as my, like, my root, but why did R become ideal? Because that makes it so that it's not two levels. It's just one level. You know, it's, it's balanced. Think about it. Like, Isn't R bigger than P? Yes. Yes. But in order to reverse all of this is P, R, V, which is okay. Uh, this is like having one, two, three. Okay, I get it. Okay, cool. So, all right. This is nice. You visualize this. But can we achieve this using our rotations? And the answer is yes, we can. So what we can do is the following. This is, the, again, the problem that we have. The way that we can fix this so that we can have our rotations work as we were using them before is instead of looking, so usually we, look at, we consider this to be the parent And so we do the rotations based on that. So like, if we have something of this format, that's the parent, and we're, that's why we had the, the A here. What we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna rotate the child and the grandchild. So we're gonna be rotating the child and the grandchild. 
That's what we're going to try to rotate. And so what we want to do is we want to just look at that subtree, B and R, and do a simple rotation that makes it like that, RV. If we do that, then of course, v, whatever was connected here, which was the P, will be connected now to that. And now once it's in this format, then we can use our usual rotation because then that means this is heavy on this side. So we can use the left rotation, which will then convert it into what we had originally, which was that PRV, right? So as long as we make this sort of grandchild rotation into this, then we can go back and using our left and right rotations to fix it. And so, yet again, this tiny little rotation that I'm making of making VR into RV, we can also do that rotation using what we already know. All we got to do is create like a great grandchild A and now do this with a regular right rotation, or sorry, left rotation, which will convert this into ARV. Then we can, and again, this is connected to the P. And then we erase the empty node. And now we, we basically do what we just did above here, which then we can again perform that rotation. On the V, do you have zero and two backwards? Ah, uh, yes, I do. You know why I put these all the time? Because I always forget the name of the rotations. And if it's if this side is heavy, the less is heavy, then it's called the right rotation. So otherwise, I personally forget the names. I know the rotation, I just know the name of them. So it's go to the side of the lesser? Yes, and that's what you call it. So, if, so this is left side heavy, therefore you have to do a, a right rotation. I don't care if you guys know the names as long as you know the actual rotations as well. Because that's what you would show me. You don't need to put like, I'm doing a left rotation. You can just simply say in a test, you would do like, you would do that, put an arrow, and then put it like that, essentially. You know, like actually just show before and after. Again, this is technically because this is the, he the, the light side, this is called a right rotation, but you don't need to put that. So anyways, this is how you would perform, again, something rather obvious per se, because you saw it before we would show you how to do it. This is how you could use the same code that you already have for left and right rotation to, uh, to achieve this double rotation. And that's essentially what the other two rules say. So now here are the, the first two rules, left and right rotation, and they're actually called left-right rotation and right-left rotation. Okay. So why? Well, because that's what they're made up of, technically. So when we flip out the, uh, they always look like a, like a little Pac-Man. So if this is what you're trying to fix, you know, it looks like a Pac-Man. So it ends up converting into that. This line gets moved to there. So like the Pac-Man loses his mouth. So yeah. What's that? That's tragic. <laughs> but yeah, so essentially, it, the left rotation there is because what you see there as yellow, so this, you perform a left rotation on that part, which converts it into what you see on purple here. And then you perform a right rotation on that to get this one. So that's why it's called the left-right rotation. Again, as you can see, the names are iffy. So as long as you know how to do the rotation, I'm okay with that. Also, technically, the left rotation you're doing there, you're not doing it on the parent. You're doing it, like I said, on the, on the, on the child and the grandchild. So whereas with, that left with the right rotation, the second one, you're do you are doing on the parent. So ultimately, what I'm really just trying to show is from here to here, you could just code it. But you could also just use your existing code for left and right rotation to do that. And actually, you don't even have to do left, left and right. You just have to do like a left rotation and then call the mirror function or something, probably. You might actually get away with that. And then 
again, right and left is the same thing as left and right, just the other way around. So that's when the pack brain is looking the other way. So you do this, which then flips these two, as you can see here, so that way. And then from there, you just pull this as the root, and then this comes down, and this comes up. So questions on that? You have now seen all four rotations. So even though we did it already, I'll do it one more time here, since uh, we still have half an hour. And essentially, that's, this is the full class right now. So, rotation one is going to convert this into PRV. And rotation two <coughs> is going to convert this into PRV, like that. And then finally, We can check the height to see that it's balanced. And so now we can go up and check this height, and we also see that that's balanced. So that we're good. We can move on to inserting the U. Historically, ABL trees has been one of the hardest algorithms for people to uh, understand and to code, so don't feel bad. But it's my favorite algorithm. It's just cool. By any chance, are you gonna push the AB algorithm at all or not? No, I'm, just, I'm not trying to be funny. The homework? Yeah. No, 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 that, that one will not, because that was, the only reason I would've pushed it is if we, if we didn't finish this today, like if today was canceled or something. But since we finished AB trees today, then it'll be due this that day. We will talk about them a little bit after the break because I, I just want to kind of reactivate your brains after the break. And so also we can show the delete a little bit on that, more practice, but ultimately you know how to do everything else now. It's just a matter of practice. All right. At what point do I actually start feeling like a computer scientist? Because right now I still feel like a scrub. <laughs> I mean, this is cool stuff. This is scientific. It's cool. You don't think this is cool? No, at one point does it start connecting to where I feel legit? When you get a job. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, let's put the U in here. See, man, now, now the internet knows my name, too. What's that? The, the people, well, I tried to hide my name on my YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll sniper J Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, put putting the U in here. Where's the U gonna go? Here. Yes. Do we concur on this? Okay. One there. Two there. Three there. Again, we don't need to recompute the left side. And since you are good programmers and have those actual variables in there, then you don't need to really do anything other than check it. Okay, finally the last letter. Will it break it or will it be okay? We'll find out. It'll break it. It'll break it. So it's gonna go here, right? Yeah. But how bad is it gonna break it? That's what I wanna know, really. Pretty bad. <laughs> All right, there's the first break, so let's fix that. It's left heavy, so we gotta perform a right rotation. So V, U, S will become that. See, it's not that, you don't have to write that much. I'm only, I was writing only that much in the beginning because I wanted to make sure I was very uh, thorough, but 
that's more than enough to do that. And then you just do that. But yes, on a test, you know, it'll be a lot of tree drawings. You'll be a full on Bob Ross tree artist by the end of the midterm. Okay. Something looks wrong. No, no, we're good. So then it's balanced. So we're done. Yay. Let's break it though. <laughs> Let's insert more things to break it. Um, I think the best thing to insert here to really, really push and mess this up is actually to delete something. Yeah. Uh, mm. I was thinking of deleting the P, but actually, mm, before that, let's insert a W. So W goes here. Or does anybody have any questions though? Anything like that? Okay. So let's insert a W. I push this up to that. Pushes it up to a two. Pushes it up to a three. So there it's on balance, right? So here's one thing that came up in the other classes. When do you do a left, when you do a single rotation, when do you do a double rotation? And the algorithm is simple in that regard. Always go for the simple rotation first. If you do a simple rotation and nothing happens, like as in the, as in the height doesn't get fixed, do another simple rotation, which will bring you back to the original tree that you had. And then at that point, perform a double rotation. And that should take care of it. And if it doesn't, then I would, it should. But if it doesn't, I suppose you could, uh, if it's still messed up at the same level, then, <laughs> then, then you're in trouble at that point. Because you, you probably messed up not rotating on beforehand, which is why you want to rotate as you check up. So otherwise it shouldn't happen. So uh, anyways. This is the part that we got to work on here. Oh, can I do? Yeah, this is matter for, oh yeah, perfect. Okay. I should have done that a long time ago. Since it broke at this level, then this is what we'll try to fix. And because this is the heavy side, what does the algorithm say to perform a left rotation? So we got to make that into that. Meaning that what is going to be my new root here? You. As for the children. So here we actually get to see some children be move around versus just imaginary ones. This one stays in the same spot, and so does the W. The one that gets moved around is the S. The S gets moved around to there. From the, from here into here. Okay. Recompute the heights of the subtree. Perfect. Now we can bring back the rest of the tree. Oh, oh, that's right. I, I updated this. Thing. Oh, this is so much better than before. Okay. And yeah, now it's all good, right? Okay. Um, how can we break this further? Let's delete, um, let's delete W now. Suppose we delete W. We check O, we check U, we check V, we find W, we delete it. When you delete W, you gotta recompute those heights and then it's all good. Okay. Now, bless you. Let's go ahead and add a T.
one there, two there, three there. Okay? So here's an example where it's not clear which rotation we should use. We could try using, well, here, I'll do here so people can see this. We could try using uh, that as our rotation. We could also try using that as our rotation, you know, a double rotation. Again, we'll go with what the algorithm says, which is try the single rotation first. If that fails, then try the double rotation. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's move that out of the way. I'm trying to do that. So we are rotating this. That's what we're rotating, okay? So R becomes a parent, and P is a child on the left side, and U is a child on the right side. And so now, these two, if they had children, they would be on the same spot. U's children will be on the same spot, which happens to be V. And then the R children, which in this case is more than one, it's actually uh, all of these. That is going to be moved over to becoming a child of U. And to make it clear that you actually just copy and paste and we'll do that. Because it's important that the S doesn't get um, messed with, like any children of the S. So the T is still to the right side of the S. You don't mess with that. So as you can see, there can be not just an individual child, but an entire subtree. And here's an example of that. OK. So uh, let's, see, let's see where that got us into the bigger picture here. So uh, 0, 0 here for the height. 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 3. So bam, the single rotation didn't fix it. That probably means that we needed to do a double rotation. But you know, it wasn't that clear. I mean, maybe because you see that here should be sort of a sign that it's a double rotation that you could have used. But again, if this is a bigger tree, then that might be more hidden. Or it's not easy for a computer to see because you have to like look around and see which, which side is heavier and things like that. So it's okay. All we got to do is perform our rotation again, to, a single rotation to get back to the original one. So let me do that. So that's the rotation we're going to do now is on that. So the U becomes a parent. V goes down like that. And then the chill, the children, P is there. And then V has no children. And then the child of U gets moved to the child of R. So go like that. And that should be what we had originally. Just so you can believe me on that. I'm going to put them side by side. Can you see that? Oh, they're the same. Which is what we started with. OK. So all right, since the single rotation of this failed, then we shall attempt the double rotation on this. <coughs> yes, so the double rotation will be to reverse it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be reversing these two. But that's part of the double rotation algorithm. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, no, I mean, after the first one failed. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. We did two single rotations. So first it failed, and we got that. And then we did another single rotation again, and we got the original back. So we're back to the original one, and now we can try to perform the double rotation. Don't try to perform the double rotation on the, um, once it failed and you rotate it once. Uh, because actually you could, but yeah, you could. You could do it that way. If you're smart, you can do it that way. No, that, that, that's, that's me. Not smart in the sense of that. It's more of like if you, if you fiddle with the code a little bit. Uh, but I think it's just go back to the original one. OK.
How do I want to do this? Um, I lost my... Okay, I'll just got it from this. Oh. Okay, so again, we have to do the, to do the double rotation. First, we're gonna rotate that. So really what we're gonna uh, do is rotate that. So the first part of the double rotation, in fact, which ro double rotation is this one? By name, it is going to be left-right rotation, yeah. And as you can see, we have to do that and then that. So the, ch the children will get flipped. Okay. So S will become the parent, RT. And then um, over here, that is still U and T and V. You don't mess with that. We're not even looking at that right now. And then P is still here. Okay. So now once you perform that rotation there, that, that, that rotation of the, of the child and the grandchild, per se. Now, we are ready to perform this rotation. So maybe just a different color for that. And this is going to be the root. And then just take care of putting the children in the right spot. So P is still on this. Remember, three of the four should be on the same spots. The only one that gets flips around is going to be the T, which gets put here. And as you can see, that looks this is looking promising. It is balanced. And so now, uh, what was on top of that? We had this stuff here. Let me make this a little bit smaller. There's no corner to grab. I don't know, fingers. There we go. Okay. And yeah, that's actually balanced now. Three, three. The uh, up thing is going to change. So there you go. You have now seen a situation where it wasn't very clear which rotation you should do. So just stick to the algorithm. Do the single one first. Could you have done the double one in the first place? Yeah, but, you know, it could have also been wrong. So I'd stick to being consistent. After all, you have to code this in a, a way that the computer needs to decide, not you. So it's uh, the easiest way to do that. So any questions on that? Any questions on the AVLP algorithm? Ah, good question. What does AVL stand for? AVL stands for the people that came up with the algorithm. Uh, <laughs> I thought you could give us something it's, deep. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's Eastern European, guys. It's like Anton Bell Landis, yeah. So here, I'm going to actually, I'll write it down. <laughs> the name of the people that made it, basically. That was actually my extra credit question on the midterm uh, last time I taught you. I had a few like it. I mean, you can keep it. I mean. Nah, nah. I don't, I, don't, I don't think anybody got it. And I did mention the name in class that time because I, I knew that I was going to ask it, so I made sure to make a point of saying it. And uh, nobody cared. <laughs> so going to be like a James Bond <laughs> Shaking, not stirred. I don't know. Or like, what's the name of his dog? Uh, his puppy. There we go. So, A, V, L. And it was invented in 1962, according to Wikipedia. So, take that with a grain of salt. Also, at this point... Online, if it happens. 
it's going to be online. So. But it'll be harder, so. Because you have notes available. So, uh, plus, you know, I don't want to make it. If I make it hard, there's less chance of you guys grouping up together, which could spread the virus further, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Um, before I stop the recording, anything else on the ABL trees that you want to see or hear? We finished a little bit early, mostly because we, I didn't have to write this by hand, as I did in the other class initially. So. Nothing? All right, so I'll stop the recording, and then we can talk about maybe homework help or whatever. So... Thanks for watching.